Does anyone remember the rhyme about the patchwork man and the picture game? Patchwork man, patchwork man, play a game. Patchwork man, patchwork man, in the frame. And the next line is something about stealing your skin. But for the life of me, I cannot remember the end. I'm trying to find it for an old friend. This friend, for privacy's sake, let's call her Kayla. Met me for a coffee after texting me out of the blue. Reminiscing about our childhood days and wondering if we could get together and catch up. I'm one of the few who stayed in our hometown and never moved. Even though there's really nothing except for lots of conifers reaching up towards the clouds like bushes. Painting the skies a permanent gray. The trees and slopes mean our roads are winding. Our homes are sh our homes shaded. And the sky blotted out by branches. Unless you're willing to drive far enough to where the land levels into p pasture. All of which is to say... Our sleepy town has its share of quirks, and it's possible the game never caught on in other places. When Kayla mentioned it in her text to me, memories flooded back. I hadn't thought about elementary school in years. Suddenly, I was back on the playground, running across the sand, screaming because Kayla wouldn't stop trying to kiss me, pretending to be Pepe Le Pew, while I pretended to be the cat. To be honest, I barely remember Kayla aside from that memory. Even though we attended the same school all the way through senior year, she became one of the popular girls. And since I turned out to be the token gay, I spent most of high school just trying to figure, just trying to keep my head down and get through. We met at a small cafe. One of the only two breakfast spots in town, and the only one with coffee I considered decent. Seated by the large windows, I wondered if I'd even recognize her. I texted that I was wearing a, gay, a gray flannel. When she came in, she looked around for a moment in confusion, spotted my shirt and beamed. Pat, almost didn't know it was you. Kayla? I smiled and stood up. I definitely didn't recognize you. Wow, you look like a real city gal. It's such a beautiful coat. It's Burberry, she said and blushed embarrassed. Maybe to be a rich woman in such a homey space. I like your tattoo. Is that a wolf? It's actually my husky Snowy. Named him when I was eight. I never wanted to forget him so. Oh my god, it is so sweet. She laid a hand to my heart, looking generally touched as she slid into my seat. I never knew you had a dog. How did I not know that? You know, my son recently got a dog. You got kids now? I've got kids now. The first half hour of catching up, Kayla was smiling, energetic, and seemingly delighted to share about her life and ask about mine, and yet I noticed the occasional drift of her eyes as I was telling her about my dad's health, like she was distracted, like all this sunny conversation was just light on the water surface, just deeper down, a darker undercurrent tugged her thoughts elsewhere, like she was itching to ask me something, but then she, then she smiled, but then the smile returned. As carefully applied as her makeup. I suppose life as a businesswoman taught her to wear that myable disposition. Just like that expensive coat. But I'm patient. I kept up the discussion and waited for her to get comfortable. Enough to shed both the fancy coat and fancy smile. Explain to me why her hands were trembling. Finally she sipped her coffee and asked... Do you remember Jimmy S Smith?
Of course I remember Jiminy Smith. That was how we always rem refer to him. Not as Jimmy, like back when he was alive. Jimmy Smith. First name, last name, Jimmy Smith, the boy who went missing. You remember what he looked like? She asked. It took me aback. I tried to think that far into the past, shook my head, and reached into her bag and pulled out a photograph. An actual printed photograph. This was a lot of effort. I looked at the photo and tried to remember him. Blue eyes, blonde hair, chubby red cheeks, and that mole on his nose. Jimmy Smith was, the, was in our fourth grade class when he went missing. People searched for weeks, but there was no trace of him anywhere. You remember, she asked, how mad the sheriff got about the patchwork man? I remember, I nodded. They thought he was someone they could find. The patchwork man was like our small town's version of the boogeyman, or Bloody Mary. A scary tale we used to spook one another. He wasn't real, but Jimmy talked about him so much in the days before he disappeared. The authorities assumed he was an actual person stalking us all. It's possible the other kids said stuff that led them to think that too. And Jimmy was- and the others drew pictures of him. So many pictures. A disfigured man in a patchwork calico coat. But I was never really all that into the fads and games that the other children got swept up in. I didn't learn about the Patrick Man until our school field trip to an art museum. Our school was so small, it was us little kids, plus all the older kids. When we finally got to the museum, all us and our kids were spilling into the rooms and wandering among the paintings, pointing and saying things like, Oh my god, it's Patrick Man! Sometimes we pointed at creepy figures or characters and Malted clothes like jesters, but mostly we pointed at paintings where there wasn't a f any figure at all. The other kids didn't get in, kept asking, What's the Patrick man? I didn't really get it either, even though I kept doing it. But then Jimmy explained it to me. The picture game was kind of like a cross between Where's Waldo and those magic eye things. The idea was that you had to try and find a Patrick man. Most of the kids were pretending just like I was. He's right behind you, we'd say. He's gonna snatch you away. Stuff like that. The teachers told, finally told us to quit it. But for weeks after, every so often, someone would remember and start it up again. Shrieking that they saw the Patrick man. They yell and point at a picture and swear they saw it for real. And that he was in the picture. Guys, I swear he was there. The week before Jimmy Smith went missing, he said it a lot. There was a rhyme too, Kayla insisted. Do you remember... Uh, do you remember we chanted it to scare him off? She began to chant. Patrick man, Patrick man, play a game. I joined in, the words tumbling up from some dusty shelf of memory. Patrick Man, Patrick Man, in the frame. Patrick Man, I can't remember the rest. Yes, that's where I'm stuck too. She struck the table with a flat of her hand, tried to lift her cup, but her fingers were shaking too bad. And then something about stealing skins, and the last line was how to get rid of him. Stealing, stealing skins. I'd forgotten about that until she mentioned it. How the patchwork man stole the skins of its victims, and his own body was sewn together from their pieces, so that he had the eyes of one and no, the nose of another. Patchwork man. I tapped my finger to my head, trying to recall the rest of it. Damn, 
That's gonna bother me. You didn't have to, didn't have to have it written down. Maybe do it in an old book or something. Doubt it. She shook her head. We destroyed all the pictures and books too. Everything. That night. You remember that night after Jimmy disappeared? We all met at Roger's house for the bonfire. Oh, you're right. Shit, I forgot you're right. We threw in our notebooks. Not just our notebooks, everything. Pictures we drew, pictures we stole from our parents' houses. Even some of the paintings. And the book. You remember Jimmy's book? Jimmy's book. Now that she said it, I can almost picture us all scattered around the library. Kayla at the girly girl's table with Nancy Drew books. Me lounging over a beanbag chair with Snoopy comics. And Jimmy suddenly exclaiming from a corner table. He had one of those magic eye books with the patterns where you, you have to cross your eye a little to see a hidden picture. And he shouted, It's him! It's him! I found the Patrick man! Everyone crowded around his table to look at the magic eye book. There was a chorus of, I don't see anything, and where? A girl named Cindy declared she could see him, but she was clearly lying because she couldn't even point where in the picture he was, and Kayla, back then with her freckled face and unkept hair, and perpetually skinned knees from roller skating, she squinted hard at the page and said, I see him too, a man standing in the corner. Now, in a diner, Caleb reached into her bag and pulled out a book. He's in here, she said, pushing it towards me. Ice tri trickled down my spine. It was a magic eye book, the same book. Different copy, but identical cover and pages. Why would you? Tell me I'm not crazy. Tell me he's not there. I... S I sighed, but I opened the book. You know, I've never been good at these things. I don't think I'll be able to f see anything in any of them. You can. I'll show you, said Kayla, impatiently but insistently taught me how to look. How to see the ball in the picture on the first page, the airplane on the second. It was difficult. I could only make out the shapes with intense concentration. But after I saw a star without her giving me hints... She nodded encouragement and turned the page. The next one was challenging. In fact, the longer I stared, the more convinced I became there was nothing in the picture at all. That this one was a dud. Sweat formed my, on my brow. I could feel the moisture pulling under my ar armpits. Even as my skin went cold. Wait. Maybe there was something. I think I see a figure. I said finally. Sort of. It's crystal clear to me when I look. She closed the book without looking at the page. That one's the Patchwork Man. Oh. I said, felt a tingle of unease. But then I thought about it for a moment. Could be any man-shaped figure, though, couldn't it? We all made up all that stuff about the Patchwork Man. It was just a game. But she was pulling more things out of her bag now. Still in the bag, open to reveal photos, articles, artwork. She shoved a handful of paper newspaper clippings that towards me. Here, in this town, she said, voice low and, and tremulous. The experience started along before Jimmy, and after him, there was a boy the next year in second grade, and later, a little immigrant girl. The experience happened every decade or so. A handful of people and then nothing for years. And now her composure completely cracked. She took her napkin and held it to her face, her mouth trembling beneath falling tears as she was buying back a scream. Finally, she burst. I didn't mean to look. I was going through my old notebooks, childhood stuff I'd packed away, and I found some diary entries I wrote about the Patrick man. She started to sob. I should have burned it. I must have forgot it. I thought if I did burn it. Once I saw my old drawings of him, I I see him everywhere now. He he won't go away. He's real. He has Jimmy Blue's eyes. Jimmy's rosy cheek. Look, look, you can see. I don't want to, I said. But she shoved Jimmy's photo over along with a folder of artwork. And in spite of myself, I looked. 
The folder contained printouts of paintings, the kind you might see in people's houses or in a museum. Initially, they were all perfectly ordinary pictures. I... I shouldered my head and told her there was nothing in them, but then I almost missed him. My eyes wanted to skip over him, but the feel of goosebumps on my arms made me look again. And there in a watercolor of a crowded street, amongst all the shades bleeding together like wet ink after a rain, was a man wearing a patchwork coat made of some sort of supple, delicate leather. He was gone in the next few paintings, but reappeared in another... Another impressionistic crowd scene. The more images I saw men, the easier he was to spot, hiding among the artworks like Waldo in the crowd. And I swallowed, trying to quell the fear that brought my heartbeat pounding in my ears, because I could see him clearly enough now to identify the one bright blue eye and ruddy cheek. It really was Jimmy's eye. And up close, the pieces of Jimmy and others and the patchwork man were all the wrong size, mismatched like some sort of Frankenstein, but even more horrifying to look at. In fact, the longer I looked, the more nauseating the details, like how the patchwork man had too many fingers on his hands, and one of his ears was upside down. The other eye had two different pupils, and the buttons on his coat coat were teeth, and I was getting sick to my stomach. Dizzy, like I was feeling a sense of vertigo, like when you look at one of those spinning spirals, and when you stop, everything keeps spinning. Like I was staring at a magic eye, and the patterns were shifting. The skin was almost like those memorizing patterns. Wham! I jumped. Kayla had slammed the folder closed and was shouting at me, hollering at the top of her lungs, shaking me. Stop looking! Stop looking! Everyone in the cafe was staring. I stammered an apology, and we paid and quickly left. Are you okay? She asked. Yeah, yeah, I know, actually. I turned to her. Why the fuck would you come all the way out here and drag me into? Because I don't want to be next. She cried anguish. Rory is starting elementary school. I just need to know the rhyme. Pet, I need to know how it ends. You're the only person I know who might remember. Please, please, what did we do to chase him away? At the bonfire. Okay. I growled, trying to suppress the bubbling fear that no... No, I would not succumb to this. This delusion. She doctored those pictures. She had to, or she'd drawn me into her crazy fears through sheer conviction. But I couldn't leave her in this state, so I said, Okay, I maybe have an idea. We parted a ways and agreed to meet at my house. Later that evening, in the meantime, I looked at the artworks that hung on the walls of my house. Artworks that had been there since my grandparents' generation. Showing landscapes and people all normal. I typed this post thinking if we didn't solve our problem, maybe someone else would help. I was still typing when the doorbell rang. Evening had come sooner than I expected. I met Kayla outside by the fire pit. She had brought her folders with pictures. I also brought a painting out from inside. It was my favorite, a landscape of the beautiful woods and slate gray sky. It seemed to embody the essence of this place, the lonely lo isolation, desolate beauty. But while typing, I reluctantly had to admit I started catching odd glimpses in the corner of my eye as if someone was peeking out from behind a trunk. I didn't want that idea to take root any deeper than it had already. The painting had to go. The plan was simple. We'd burn the pictures, recite the rhyme, and hoping that reenacting what we had done as children would jog our memories. I cut the fire going while Kayla stood there, tight-lipped and pale. She removed her makeup now and her skin was shallow, and her freckled cheeks sunken with fear. She kept whispering, Patrick man, Patrick man, trying to remember the rhyme I knew. 
but without her knowing the rest, it sounded almost like she was calling him. Hey, I nudged her and began tossing some of the pictures from her folder into the roaring fire. She nodded and followed suit. Throwing her old diary on and in the magic eye book, no one was left of her folder. And lastly, I ripped my painting out of its frame and broke it into two and threw the canvas on. While all of that was catching, nearly smothering the fire, we faced each other and held hands. It felt awkward and ridiculous, two adults chanting like children, but we did it anyway. Patrick man, Patrick man, play a game. Patrick man, Patrick man, in the frame. Patrick man, I see you, looking for some skins to steal. Kayla shouted, triumphant, remembering the third line. Just one more. Patrick man, can't take mine, you. But even the line came back to me. She stopped turning her head. She was sta staring at something. You're not supposed to look away from one another during a chant. Not supposed to look at the fire. But her head was turned, mouth hanging open. Eyes wide in terror. I followed her gaze and... It was impossible, but I swear to you. There on top of the heap was my painting of, of the converse. The edges were starting to catch. The Patrick man was stepping out from the trees. And it was coming out of the painting. That piercing blue eye that used to be Jimmy's fixed on Kayla. The world seemed to swirl and ripple, everything flattening out. Kayla flattening out too. She had her hands at her face, like the character painted in the screen. Patrick Mann's misshapen hands, one large and one small. The fingers all different lengths and wrong, like how his left hand had two thumbs. Grabbed her, grabbed her and drew her in, and they both seemed to blend with brush strokes, strokes, and ash and flames, and then the canvas was burning. The pain was gone, and there was no one standing where Kayla had been. Just the prints from her shoes in the dirt. I gapped disbelieving, stood there in a daze, while the fire slowly died. Not accepting any of what I had seen. How could I? It had been some sort of kind of nightmare. That was the only thing that made sense. I was having a waking nightmare. Maybe someone spiked my drink. I don't know. I don't know. But when I got inside, I looked at the wall, living room, and groaned because there was a small family portrait. A painting of my grandmother. Of my grandfather. A painting by my grandmother of my grandfather. Now, instead of my grandfather, it showed the Patrick man with a patch, new patch of freckled skin on his cheek. And I was for myself the rhyme. The one Kayla didn't finish. Patrick man, Patrick man, play a game. Patrick man, Patrick man, in the frame. Patrick Man, I see you. Looking for some skins to steal. Patrick Man, you can't take mine. You know why? Because you're not real. But I know now that rhyming won't help me. The rhyme just tells you to rule. That if he's not real, he can't hurt you. If he's not real, you don't believe in him. But I think it's too late because I can see him so clearly now. Even now as I finish typing this post. No, for anyone reading this, you don't make the mistake I did. If your kids talk about him, please convince them he's not real. It's not too late for them, as long as you can convince them. My only hope now is to drink myself to oblivion, sleep it off, try to convince myself when I wake up that it was all a fever dream. That Kayla never contacted me. I already deleted all of her messages. And none of this happened. I just have to make myself believe it didn't happen. Patrick man, Patrick, Patrick man, play a game. Patrick man, Patrick man, in the frame. Patrick man, I see you looking for some skins to steal. Patrick man, you can't take mine. You know why? Because you're not real.